Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am the Sam, the beans bopping around in the background, so you will hear him inevitably. And today I want to talk about how to make a home contemporary. If you missed the mid-century modern build, I did go over this a little bit. Modern refers to a specific style of home built from about the early to mid-1900s, while contemporary refers more to what is in style now. Since contemporary changes era to era, I wanted to go over with you guys what is contemporary now and talk about how to take any of the home styles that we filled so far this month and turn them contemporary. Most of today's builds are based in at least one other architectural style, if not multiples, and then sort of have the contemporary elements put onto them, which is kind of what we're going to be doing in today's video. Contemporary homes refer to anything being built currently, as in the 21st century. It can specifically mean some homes built now with a decidedly Scandinavian influence, but we'll be using the slightly broader definition today to avoid too much confusion. These contemporary builds are often a combination of other styles and do draw heavily from the mid-century modern home style. And I think that that's where some of the confusion in the phrasing comes from. Contemporary as a architecture type began in the 70s, but since we're talking about contemporary meaning what is currently in style, I'm going to be focusing on what is popular here in the 2010s and 2020s. I do apologize if that makes you feel old, I know it makes me feel old. Contemporary homes rely heavily on open floor plans, lots of natural light, geometric shapes, clean lines, and unique shapes asymmetry, different angles, combinations of angles clashing where you wouldn't normally see. There's also often a focus on sustainability, which can result in green spaces, clean energy production, recycled materials, and general consciousness for the surrounding environment. On the inside of the build, bright minimalism is the reigning design style, although maximalism is on the rise in some demographics. Along with this, neutral colors and grayscale are the most common color palettes at this time, but trends are starting to move in a more bright and colorful direction, and I suppose that by the time my generation is able to build our own homes, if that day ever comes, thank you economy, we'll probably be seeing a resurgence in a lot more maximalism and bright colors. As always, this is The Sims 4, you can do what you want, these are just going to be some general guidelines for if you want to keep one of your favorite styles, but help it feel a little bit more up to date. And since, again, contemporary builds tend to rely on at least one more traditional home style for sort of the base of the home, that's why I thought it would be a good idea to sort of go through some of the builds that we've done already on this channel and sort of update them. Hopefully this all makes sense, and you can go ahead and type your comments now and guess which build this one started out as, if you want. You don't have to play, I don't have any prizes to give out, but it seems like a fun challenge. I would like to start with the Spanish Colonial. I just think this is a really sweet little build. It already has the open floor plan, so most of what we actually have to do to bring this up to more or less contemporary standards is just cosmetic work on the outside. One of the things we want to make sure we do when we're transitioning a build from more traditional to contemporary is make sure that we don't lose too much of the original style. So for this build, that's going to mean we want to keep at least some of these plaster walls. We'll want to keep the red roof. The courtyards, of course, have to stay, and we'll keep the indoor outdoor door living as well. Starting from the top down, one of the easiest ways to bring this roof to a more contemporary level, well first of all you could change it into solar panels if you wanted, but to keep it base game we can switch it out for this red concrete which will immediately smooth it out. And I'm going to get rid of this roof piece and replace it with a platform. I can extend this platform a bit to give the sort of impression of eaves. We can even keep the red roof with the not so drab slab, some red trim, and some red inlaid exterior trim. So now we've kept the red roof, we've even kept most of the original shape, but we've added a little bit more of a flat roof piece here, and you can make this thicker if you want. I'm also going to change out the roof trim for something a little bit more up to date. And that's how I would contemporarify, contemporize? That's how I would bring the roof in a more contemporary direction. Take that. Next up, doors and windows. Again, we want to keep some of the Spanish colonial flavor, but we want to update the windows a bit. I want to start by actually updating the door. I know this is a little bit more on the mid-century angle, but it will still help. Then we can add a nice tall window next to it, and then we have a lot of light coming into our entry. I'm actually not going to add a window here. Instead, I'm going to bring a secondary color to the outside of the build, which I could do pretty easily with some stone, perhaps paneling, or even a more rough stucco texture in a different color. I'll put those same windows here, still the two side by side, just like we started with. The kitchen window I will also update, and then we will add our floor to ceiling window in this bedroom and replace the windows that were here as well. Inside is already looking pretty good. There's not really much reason for us to change out these tiles unless we wanted to smooth things out a little bit and get rid of some of the extra texture, sort of push it in a minimalist direction, in which case we could go with our colored concrete again or push it in a more neutral direction. 
I think that's boring, so let's try red. I also want to update this space here, and I think the best way to do that without going to a different pack to use a different spandrel is going to be to draw a floor piece on top of this room here and add an exterior trim. That way I can remove these walls, add columns instead, the same fence we have around this courtyard, and it'll still look like we have a bit of a separating line there. The main updating that we have to do inside is this kitchen. The good news is the counters are pretty cheap. You can use the Bland Co. Contemporary counter or the Harbinger counter. We do have a lot of red in this build, so I might just keep going with that. Don't worry, we'll do beige in the next one. I think the last thing you'd want to do inside is just smooth out the walls even more, get rid of this plaster, and go for just some plain paint. And that's how I would go about making a Spanish colonial a little bit more contemporary. For the most part, we changed out the roof and simplified the windows, made a couple other minor cosmetic adjustments, but for the most part, that was all this one really needed. I feel like the Prairie Craftsman is our next golden opportunity. It already has so many of the bones. We pretty much just need to fix the roof and windows. The layout is already going to be good, just like with the last one. We will touch on the landscaping a little bit with this one as well, but let's start with this roof. I want to keep this piece right here. I want to keep like a deck sort of area, but we're going to replace all of this with a flat roof. I'm going to start by just tracing out where the roof already was, and then I'm going to extend it like this, more or less giving it like still the feel of having overhanging eaves, but not quite. Now, if I raise this all up one more, I can actually get rid of these walls and you don't have to worry about the Sims just wandering out onto the platform. Speaking of platforms, I do want to shout out my TikTok real fast while I do the next piece of roof. I have been posting on there quite a bit um, this last week, doing mostly a lot of Q&A. So if you have any specific questions about the build mode, I can probably answer it over there. I'm just recommending the TikTok over YouTube because sometimes it can be difficult for me to type out answers in the comments comments, um, especially for slightly more complex questions, and it's just easier to show. So much of my content on there is about roofing, ponds as well, some interior design sort of stuff, so if you're interested in any of that, the link is in the description. Follow me on TikTok. This portion of the roof I'm actually going to extend to sort of cover this upper balcony, and it's not going to be completely covered. I'm going to do a cool thing, which is draw another platform inside it and then delete it which is going to make a hole. Cool, right? This looks so weird with all the other exterior stuff we still have, but don't worry, it's going to look good. And then finally back here, draw in my roof shape, extend it one little tile in each direction. These columns and the fence absolutely have to go. And while we're at it, let's actually delete all of the windows too. I'm going to start by just covering this in white plaster to sort of give myself a blank slate. And now we can talk about mixing up some tones. I'm going to be using base game and eco lifestyle for this one just because could we do it with just base game? Yes. However, eco lifestyle has some awesome stuff. I want to show it off a little bit and I think it's just as important to learn with the base game as it is to include other packs, especially for build styles and areas that those packs didn't like come with, you know, like using eco lifestyle on a prairie craftsman, definitely not what the pack was designed for. Anyway. Mixing materials outside, doing a mix of more organic materials as well as more man-made materials, right? Stone and glass, concrete and wood, something like that. It's beautiful. So I'm actually going to go with this paneling. Now remember, we want to keep the Prairie Craftsman just sort of vibes, and something that's really important to the Prairie Craftsman is keeping a lot of horizontal lines. I'm getting really sick of this lamppost. Anyway, so I can keep those horizontal lines alive and well by adding some of these horizontal panels. This is going to break up and warm up the build just a tad, and it gives us a little bit more of a color option to work with when we start adding columns and windows, instead of just going for black and white, which you could totally do. Black and white is an excellent com color combo for this, uh, but I tend to do black and white a lot, so I'm trying to branch out. I can match that paneling to some wood flooring. And now let's start to bring back some of our doors and windows. Notice we haven't changed any of the walls at all for either of these. I am going to do one of the boxier colonials next, because the Spanish colonial already had some flavor to it. Not really a surprise. Um, so I'm going to do one of the more European colonials as well, and talk about how to sort of change up the shape to get some of that asymmetry if it doesn't already exist. For right now, we're just going to talk about how to continue warming up the prairie craftsman, but still keep both some prairie and craftsman elements. Definitely need a nice windowed front door, and I really like how this window lines up with this part of the build here, almost gives a false vertical line. So that'll be more of the contemporary flavor intersecting, literally, with the prairie flavor. These larger windows that have the cross panels in them kind of have some of that craftsman idea of, right, those intersecting geometric lines, some of the framing. 
If I bring the fence back, you can kind of see it a little bit better. It's like one of these intersections just sized up and turned sideways. We can actually grab one that sort of angles to one side and angles to the other to make almost a whole corner window. And I think by law we have to use one of these sliding doors. Nice. I'm going to use these windows upstairs. Again, that strong horizontal line will really help keep the prairie style intact. Now for myself of where the walls are over here. And I still want a nice big window leading into the dining space. Let's talk about the inside. First thing I want to do is just use this use this floor inside that's immediately going to brighten things up. We'll also want to update this kitchen a bit, which once again is pretty much going to come down to the cabinets. We want something much more streamlined and less detailed, but we can still do the exact same layout. That's totally fine. But look how much that just brightened everything up. We can fix up this arch as well. I'm going to leave the seasons cross beam. I forgot I use seasons on this build, but I'm going to match the wood tone to everything else. And I'm actually going to use these bamboo fence pieces sort of in place of the columns. Again, the floor plan is already pretty good, which is nice. Already has that nice open feel. We've just added some much better windows. Ah, I forgot to finish the roof. I got so excited about the windows. I'm just going to use this white roof here with I think the same warm beige as my platform siding and the floor trim. If you want to add a little bit more cool factor to this hole, we can actually grab the smooth keeper in the similar wood tone and make sort of a little false pergola. Once again, sort of lining that with our floor trim. I also want to update the columns and fences outside. I can use this column, which will match the windows pretty well. And I'm turning on move objects because the landscaping is currently in the way. I'm going to leave this quite open and not have nearly as many columns as I had before. And I'm going to use this nice little fence instead of the more detailed craftsman one. Let's talk about contemporary landscaping. As the push to be more eco-conscious continues, you're going to see more and more landscaping focused on not needing a ton of water, not needing a ton of maintenance. So something like a concrete slab here to sort of bring you into the home, more low maintenance plants, and just a general focus on sustainability is probably more what you're going to see. So what did we change and what did we keep? We kept the very strong horizontal lines. We kept the exact same shape and floor plan. We kept the warm, welcoming family vibes and we kept the foundation because I forgot to change it. We changed up the roof to be more flat, which is not necessarily necessary, uh, but a very common thing in most contemporary builds, you'll have at least some of the roof be quite flat. We changed up some of the inside to be a little bit more simple and streamlined and we changed up the windows a lot. We wanted to keep a lot of the Craftsman vibes, but give it some more contemporary energy with much larger unbroken panes of glass and a little bit more dimension and shape in the windows. Keeping things unique, you know? Little man is singing whilst on the bus, so you can probably hear that. That's what that song is. But let's talk about what to do if you literally just have a rectangle. Building in rectangles does not mean you're a bad builder by any means. There are so many styles of home that are built primarily on rectangles or are just straight up a rectangle or even a square for that matter. But if we do want to bring this up to contemporary standards, we want to break some of that up, give it a little bit more asymmetry. So let's add an office, make this a little bit more of an interesting shape. I think we can extend the living space out a bit. I'm going to get rid of these columns as well. And basically we'll make this an office. I'll come back to the inside in just a second. Let's finish the outside, but that's going to be our new work from home station. And that's broken up the rectangle quite a bit already. Let's talk about the roof real quick. First, get rid of everything. It's just the way to do things. A lot of the contemporary style comes from very Scandinavian influences and something that you'll see on a lot of Scandinavian influenced homes. It's going to be something like this. Drag your eaves out, press B to build walls, and you have one of these things. Of course, we can make it look a little bit more pretty, but bring in that contemporary sort of open, but mostly covered deck that is slightly more conducive to not tropical, not super hot environments. Because we had something similar to this in the Spanish colonial, but that was literally built to be in the desert where it's just like hot a lot. This offers significantly more protection from the elements. So for the rest of this roof, we could do flat, we could do a, another hip roof, or we could do a combination. Because remember, we don't want to lose all of the style. But if I do this and just match the pitch, extend the eaves to line up so this should all line up pretty well on this side, I can add a little bit of a platform here. I will have to delete this small portion so that it doesn't show through in here too much. And next up, I think we really need to switch out this brick. We've been using a lot of white. Let's do some black. Or at the very least, very dark gray. Actual black walls are ridiculously hard to come by in The Sims. I'll complement this with a nice gray platform. And I think maybe we'll try out some metal roofing. By the time we switch out the windows, this is going to be unrecognizable. For this little bit right here, I'm just going to grab a half wall because then I can use the exact same paint color. And I'm going to add a more modern roof trim. 
probably in gray to match everything else. All right, let's talk about the inside. So with the other belts, we didn't really have to change the inside too much because it already had a fairly open floor plan. For most of the European type colonials, right? Not the Spanish colonial, basically, the French, the British subtypes, you're going to see a very segmented floor plan, which is fine and it has its place. However, it is not very common for the more modern build to have something this segmented. So what we're going to do is use the build tool by pressing B, we'll get the wall tool, which is what I meant to say, and we can hold control and just get rid of these walls. And the door frames too, because I had to turn on move objects. Now I do want to keep a wall on this side of the stairs just to help it stay sort of supported, but we can move the fireplace. Don't know where my voice went and update the kitchen again. I have to change my windows. Once again, just going for anything more streamlined. And with all this extra space, we could really expand the dining area, make it take up much more space visually by extending the table or adding a rug, add an island, add a bar. So many possibilities with the open floor plan. Upstairs, not much is really going to change. I mean, we don't really want to open the bedrooms one into another. So what did we keep and what did we change? We added a very small addition here just to bring out some of the asymmetry. Technically, we even kept the original roof. However, by adding the Scandinavian inspired partially covered deck area and a platform here on the front, we were able to accentuate some of the asymmetry that the colonial just straight up lacking. Changing out the windows did wonders for the amount of natural lighting entering the room, even though we technically kept the exact same spacing as was already in the build. Changing up the color palette quite a bit and overall I would say this build is definitely recognizable as having Georgian roots. All right we did something with some Mediterranean flair, we did a craftsman, we did something super boxy, and now to finish up the video the Victorian. But not just any Victorian, the gothic revival Victorian because I am crazy. I just I really want to see what this would look like with basically the exact opposite styling. If you didn't already check out this video I highly recommend looking at it. I think it's the most popular out of the series so far. We rebuilt the goths home to actually be a gothic revival victorian but it's all about imposing facades we have lots of pointed arches we've got iron details we've got the friezes and the floor trims and steeply pitched roofs all sorts of stuff and we're going to keep pretty much none of it so let's start from the top down again and start by deleting all of the roofs and also the friezes i am also going to remove a couple of these dormers just because our roofing is going to change so drastically i might bring them back but we'll see now my goal is to actually keep as much of this original shape as possible. I think the main thing I'm going to change as far as the shape goes, other than removing a couple of the dormers, is actually to flatten this out like that. I'll do that to these as well. That's about all I really want to change shape-wise. So let's see what we can do with this. I'm thinking this would be a really good opportunity to experiment with some layered half gable roof pieces, so that's what we're going to do with this main portion of roof right here. I'm going to start with the largest portion of the roof as normal and then pitch this down dramatically. I'm going to copy the roof piece and place it on this portion of the roof as well. And to keep this eave from sort of clipping in weird, I can hold shift and just push that in. And I'm going to place it back here. This looks so weird. Cross gabled roofs is a really common part of the Gothic Revival Victorian, and I'm wondering if we can get something similar, but also more contemporary. Like what if I make it a cross gable skylight? I'm gonna leave it, we're gonna see what happens. Up at the top here, I think I'm going to stick with a platform. I know it looks ridiculous, but I truly, truly believe that some proper paint and windows is going to make this look so much better. We just have to stick it out. I don't want this here. Okay, there we go. I think I figured out how to fix the tower issue as well. If I sort of push that back in, I can redraw a bit of a tower here and still keep some of that sort of original wall detail, just make it contemporary by using platforms instead. If I extend this over here and just pull in that roof eave, yeah, that could be interesting. I definitely, definitely want the half gable to be right here on top of this sort of not quite a bay window window, but I want it to be going the opposite direction of the other gables. And I'm going to see how it looks in front of a platform roof. It's going to look a lot better after we change the colors, that is for sure. And we can still sort of make a little bit of a covered area here with that same thing that we just did on the prairie. I'm going to add that very same pitched half gable to all the other sort of kind of sort of bay windows making sure that I have a slight eave overhanging on the outside and I tuck in the inside ones just for safety. Now for this one, we could actually add another super small balcony. So I think we'll do that. All right, and then we can cover it by copying this roof piece, putting it in the exact same spot, just extending the eave a bit by holding shift. 
I think we should paint it next so that we can start pulling together our vision a little better. Now what I'd really like to do here is have the exact same color on this portion of the wall all the way up through the platform so it just looks like the whole wall is significantly taller. Now the best way to do that is by using half walls. You find whatever half wall is the same height as your platform, which is not that one, that one. Yes, you're going to have a little bit of a trim on the top, but this is worth it in my opinion. Now because this is the goth's residence, I do want to keep a similar color scheme, but I want to get rid of the bricks because they are just too busy. Plus, black isn't technically a color scheme for the gothic revival anyway. It tended to be much more neutral under tones, so we're playing a fine line here between keeping some of that gothic Victorian and bringing in the contemporary and keeping it goth, but we can do it. If I start by making everything the same color, I can pick which areas I want to sort of stand out and paint them a little differently. Of course, keeping the black. I do need a better platform trim or platform side or whatever this is called. Yeah, no, platform trim, I was right. And I want to add some floor trim, but I don't want it to be quite as fancy as it was before. So I'm going to go with a slightly smaller one just to place on any of these sort of decks that are floating. And I'm going to add some more modern roof trim as well. I'm switching out this platform trim up here just to give the top of the tower a little bit more interest. And I think we're ready to move on to doors and windows and all that stuff. I'm going to switch out the fences for this eco lifestyle fence because it's just better. And I am going to add this deck back. If I can get it to line up. There we go. We still want something nice, big, and important looking for our front door. We just want it to involve glass. Of course, we need to add in some of these floor to ceiling windows. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. Ah, I forgot to put in kitchen windows. Once again, we really want to update the space with more streamlined cabinetry. And of course, I know it's the goth's house and they really like their black and red, but if you really wanted to update the interior space and make it feel more contemporary, you really want to go with lighter colors or at the very least solid colors. It just feels so wrong though. I don't think I can do it. But we can add some better inside arches. This one is quite industrial from Eco Living eco lifestyle, whatever it is, but even just simplifying to something as basic as the cats and dogs arches would do wonders. This door from the the desert deluxe kit or whatever, technically it's an arch. It kind of looks like you could close the doors though, which I don't think would go super great for right here, but it could be pretty nifty between the office and the living space and the dining room. This will help give it some of the open floor plan feel while still keeping some of the main walls intact that keep the Victorian essence. There is so much more light coming into these rooms, so even though the wallpaper is still quite dark because I just can't bring myself to change it, it still makes the whole space feel much more light and open. I definitely want to pare down the landscaping. Keeping some of these cypress trees I think is a good move. Bring in some more basic hedges and add just a touch of landscaping on this side. Much to my surprise, we didn't actually change the shape of this build nearly as much as I thought we were going to. We did square off some of the octagons, which is oddly enough something that we did a lot of when we first did this build changed up the roof a lot, did keep a little bit of the high-pitched cross gable over here with our funky little tower, but for the most part made everything much flatter, or at the very least a much lower pitch, brought in a variety of textures instead of just sticking with the one, and all of these windows give so much more light to the inside of this build. That's all I have time for today, but hopefully today's video was helpful. I know it was a little different to what we've been doing, but trying to understand how the contemporary style works and how it's kind of a style, but also kind of not a style, it's like... Ah, you know. Um, so yeah, hopefully this was helpful. I had a good time. I really like doing this sort of stuff with the more contemporary direction. And it's just cool to see how much you can change what feels like a really old fashioned build with just a few quick cosmetic upgrades, which I suppose is true in real life too, but who has that kind of money? If you enjoyed this video, you're going to love the rest of the series. Again, if you haven't already checked out any of the builds you saw in today's video, they're all linked in this playlist. We've done 17 builds and then this one like how to convert a build video and there are several more coming still. If you have any particular styles you'd like to see, you can let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, check out the playlist, check out the video YouTube thinks you will enjoy. Thanks so much for building with me today and I look forward to building with you again tomorrow. Bye!